What's up Troop? In today's video, we're gonna look at everything new in Isotope's Ozone 11. Ozone 11 is a fantastic update from Ozone 10, giving us a new feature set, some new tools, and taking a lot of the feedback from 10 and implementing it into a better, more ergonomic workflow. First off, let's have a look at some of the new modules that are available in 11, with the first one being Clarity. Clarity module can now be found in the plugin list. That's gonna be a very top one with a nice little eye icon just here. Let's have a little listen to the way it processes and the effect it can give us. By default, it's doing nothing at all. We have an amount control here over on the left hand side, which is effectively a percentage of how much of the effect we want to be. We have a tilt, much like a tilt EQ. The kind of slope processing that we want to happen. Much like a compressor here, we've got an attack and release of how quickly the dynamic effect of clarity is going to take effect. Over on the readout here, we've got these two filters here, which will tell us to ignore certain frequency spectrums. And the lowest we can come down here is 300 Hertz, meaning we're always gonna be ignoring the low end region for that. It makes sense with the utility of this plugin to be lifting up the brightness and optimizing for loudness that the low end would then be left alone. If we've got a particularly balanced or specific high end going on, for example, maybe we've got uh, some enhanced vinyl crackle or things like that put in as part of the mix, we could also tell it to ignore that spectrum as well so it's not altered. The idea behind Clarity is to increase the spectral loudness of a track and really elevate it up without it becoming harsh. Kind of like pulling the dampening away from a vocal, giving all of that top end back, but without it scratching the ear too much. Now having worked with this track already, I found somewhere between the 20 to 25% does a really nice effect. For the sake of the video to make it far more easy to perceive what is happening, We'll stick to 25 and I found the attack and release not to overly affect this track too much but something that's maybe a little slower and more melodic would absolutely need to be dialed in. So let's have a listen to the A and B difference just here. We're going to switch on gain match and then when we bypass clarity you'll be able to hear the kind of blanket effect being lifted off. is doing a really nice job and in a later video I actually master this entire track and we do end up using the clarity module in pretty much these settings. In Ozone 10 we were introduced to Master Rebalance which gave us some frankly voodoo magic of being able to adjust the vocal, the instrumentation and other elements within a master track. Something that previously required some ridiculous EQing on the mid side or just wasn't possible and required you to go back to the mix to get those kind of results. Well, it's gone a step further with Ozone 11. If we take master rebalance away, we might notice up in the top left hand corner here, we still have those three icons as well as this one. And it says full mix. If I choose this, we have vocals, drums, and bass. This allows us to not only isolate and adjust the level of a particular stem of the master, but apply effects individualized to that as well. However, we can only apply the effects chain to one of these instances. So for example, if I select full mix, everything will be applied to the full mix. We'll use the exciter here just to demonstrate how this works. If I switch it over to tube, we can give ourselves an amount on the full mix. And Fair to say that's relatively unpleasant. Now let's select just the vocal and you'll notice that the majority of the mix is left untouched while only the vocal is going into the exciter. Now we can 
take the saturation a lot further. And we're only enhancing that vocal. We can do the same thing with the drums. Or give ourselves some extra harmonics in the bass. This means if something needs overall correction, it's now more considerably easier to do that. If we were to open, say, an EQ, and we discover that perhaps some top end noise is coming through with the bass, like we can see here, well, we can now EQ that out of only the bass. We can apply an EQ band, give ourselves a nice low pass, maybe something a bit more gentle. And as you can see, we're taking that out, but the drums and the vocal remain. If we solo it, we can hear everything that's being removed in that area. Bring it down, and we can hear all our bass tones. So that is stem mixing in Ozone 11. Now something new added to multiples of the modules in Ozone. Next, let's have a look at the transient sustain controls that have been implemented into Ozone 11. One something that we normally wouldn't think about looking at transient sustain, something like the Exciter. When we have the Exciter module selected, it'll be found under here. So we've got our usual Venn diagram that would allow us to switch to mid-side. We now have transient and sustain and switch that module into, and we can detect Determine what's going on over here. So again, we've got our Venn diagram still as a drop down, solo out transient or disable transient. We've then got the same for sustain to solo sustain, switch off sustain, and now we also have channel link as well. So let's give ourselves some split bands and we'll focus on applying a little bit of distortion to the mid range percussion. Let's give ourselves some split bands here and we'll work with the pink one here. So let's just have a look at soloing out the transients and sustains. So there are our transients. So now when we apply triad, this one here, that's significantly different to what we're used to applying it to. And it gives a bit more punch and it feels a little bit steppy but when we allow the whole track to come through we've really enhanced the dynamic and transient feeling of the middle of the drums in this particular track if you don't believe me let's disable it very subtle but it brings a lot more focus into that part of the track especially the transient side and obviously you could take this a whole step further by utilizing the stem focus option and applying it only to the drums of mastering usually involves taking your waveform and squishing it to then lift it up and get some overall loudness. This involves taking the loudest portion of a track, bringing it down in volume so it's closer in level to the quieter sections and then lifting everything up. Well, in the maximizer module now, we finally have the option for upward compression. So in the redesigned maximizer, we can see we have upward compression available to us. Let's have a look how we can utilize this. So if we engage it, we get 
lovely feedback graph showing where it's lifting up those quieter elements. Now let's make use of the IRC4 transient and give ourselves an output level. Now we can achieve some significant loudness by lifting up as well as reducing down, meeting ourselves more comfortably in the middle. If I take gain match off, we'll hear this considerably louder. Here's a quick countdown. Something introduced to us in Ozone 10 was the Delta button, and it was available to us in some areas, but not others. But Ozone 11 is available to us in many, many more sections. Remaining on the maximizer here, we can see that we've got a Delta button. And the Delta button allows us to hear what this particular module is doing processing wise. And this is now available basically everywhere that I could find, rather than just the key things like the Exciter, for example. So now when we enable Delta on something like the maximizer, we can actually hear the differences that are being made to the track. So now we're hearing the lift happening down here and we're hearing the limiting occurring at the top here. It's interesting to get an audible readout of those upward compression moments happening and when they actually get surprisingly quite loud. It's a useful tool to hear the opposite end of what's going on with any of your tools in Ozone. In something like the Dynamic EQ, if we were to give an upward lift here. Delta now lets us hear that difference. In using this, we can really understand exactly what we're affecting on each module with each decision we make. And the last thing we're gonna look at today is the Master Assistant. It's had a massive overhaul from Ozone 10 and delivers, frankly, very surprising results. So let's compare the automated mastering assistant in 10 versus 11. <laughs> find that the AI assistant is now actually valid and usable and creates a fantastic starting point here in 11. If you want to dive more into it and look at how we can master a track entirely just using these elements and the tools available to us here, watch this video next where we're going to do exactly that.